Good morning. It's uh, Pastor Andrew Hewlett here for Sunday, July the 19th. And I know it seems a little funny seeing me on a separate from the worship team um, on this, this YouTube video, but soon we're going to be back to normal, sort of live streaming all together as one. But for various reasons, it just uh, works better uh, this way for, you know, for right now. Just a few announcements, um, things I wanted to remind you of. Remember our prayer initiative that's that's happening that we're involved with other churches with. Um, that our our day is the twenty seventh for Open Gate Church, and I encourage you to sign up for a slot, an hour long slot there. Call Diane in the office, and she can give you more details. Um, just in, encourage you to to join um, with me and some others at some of our informal um, uh, gatherings that, that we're having too, and, and check the email for the actual time. Uh, because my schedule shifts around, I've had to shift those times, but it's a, an informal time just to gather on the front lawn of, uh, of Lighthouse School there and have a time of very informal fellowship and, and singing some songs of, of praise together. I want to encourage you too, if you're a member of a home group, to. Um, get together with your people, suggest maybe an outside meeting where you can uh, meet safely there. There's ways of, of doing that, so I encourage you. And if you're not in a group, take the initiative to uh, phone a few people and just say, hey, let's, I'd love to get together. So uh, I just encourage you to take, take the initiative there. Also, I wanted to, again, thank people who generously give for the work and mission of Open Gate Church it's, uh, it's so important that you continue to do that for our ministry. So thank you very much. I also wanted to, uh, there's lots of options. You can see the, uh, the, the email as well for options for giving online through credit card, Interact. Uh, also too, uh, you could drop something directly off at the office, but make sure that Diane is down there. You can't mail something in to Lighthouse School, the school of course in the summer, um, is not operating, so you can't mail it to the school. Make sure you have the, the correct mailing address for um, Open Gate Church. Okay, those I uh, just wanted to put those out there right now, and maybe I'll open with a word of prayer. And this is uh, uh, from our new ACNA prayer book. So let us pray. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And also include a, a prayer uh, for the, before the reading of Scripture. Blessed Lord, who caused all Scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them that by patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to say, um, maybe I'll, I'll going to look at the Romans passage, but of course, uh, I encourage you to to see the passage from the Old Testament on Jacob's ladder. It's a, it's a fascinating passage there. And I uh, encourage you to read the whole story of, of uh, Jacob and his life. We also have, too, in the Gospel reading, uh, Matthew 13, the parable of the, the weeds and the wheat, or the wheat and the tares, as it's historically called. And I think there's an important message in there that, again, the, the children of the kingdom and the children of this world um, you know, grow up together. It's not our job to be out there trying to uh, definitively define who's in the kingdom and who's out. It, it, these, these grow together, these plants, and it's God's job. He, job. He's the, the ultimate judge, and we entrust that work of separation to him on, on the last day. So I think there's an important message there. But I wanted to draw our attention to the passage that we have from Romans chapter 8, and especially verses 12 to 25, it speaks about life in the Spirit, life in the Holy Spirit. And uh, the first seven chapters 
of the book of Romans, and we've talked about this before, talk about the basis of our relationship with God. And that really all of Romans, but especially those first seven chapters, focus in on this truth that we're justified by faith. We're put in right relationship with God by virtue of our, our faith and our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ specifically and his finished work upon the cross. Uh, justification by faith. Uh, again, as I've mentioned before, see it like the righteousness of Jesus Christ by virtue of what he has done and our trust in that has been credited into our bank account. It's, it's not our um, trying to make ourselves right before God by just doing good things. We can't do that. So justification by faith, very important. Now, actually, at the end of that whole section, um, I believe it actually ends on the first verse of uh, chapter 8, where Paul says, now, given all of this, this wonderful truth that our salvation is not based on anything that we do. It's based on everything that God has done in and through Christ. Therefore, he says, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And that's a verse you know, I'm, I'm sure you know well, but it's a, it's a glorious truth. I, I honestly hope you don't spend your time walking around with this vague sense of condemnation that you're really out of steps with God. Um, the Bible says that in Christ Jesus, there's no condemnation. And that's an that's uh, important truth to live in on a day-to-day -day basis. But I want to look at this at verses 12 to 25, because given all what Paul is saying about the basis of our relationship with God, the next question that might come up would be, well, how do we live the Christian life then? How do we live out the Christian life in the here and now? And Paul says it's, it's through life in the Spirit, life in and through the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, we don't just, uh, the Christian life is not all about just, you know, gritting our teeth uh, to trying to get through. It's not about learning some new Christian lingo. It's not about just putting a smile on our faith, face and trying to be happy all the time. It's not even, as, as important as avoiding sin is, our Christian life is not all about just sin, sin avoidance. It would be completely wrong if we created our whole spirituality around sin avoidance. Um, that's not at the heart of things. Again, Paul talks about the fact that it's really about life in and through the Holy Spirit. Um, I told a, a story a number of years ago, and you may have heard it before, about uh, somebody who was um, cutting down some trees with a handsaw, and they had spent a lot of time doing it, and it was slow work. And one day that the neighbor came over and said, oh, Frank, he said, you're just using a handsaw. You should use one of these. And he holds up a, um, you know, a, a power saw. And, and the person said, oh, I've never used one of those. I've, I've never seen one of those before. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a try. So he, he leaves the saw with him, the power saw with him. And then the neighbor goes, goes away. And a little while, it seems pretty quiet outside there. And a little while later, there's a knock on the door. And this man comes back over and he's, he's terribly tired and worn out and sweat pouring down his face. And he hands the saw back to the guy. It's a bit bent up. And he says, this, I, you know, what's the point in this? This is even worse than the last one I had. And the, per the neighbor picks it up and he says, well, that doesn't make any sense. And he reaches down, he pulls the handle and it goes, rin, 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 rin. and, the, and the, the guy who was cutting down the tree goes, whoa, what's that noise? What's that noise? And of course, <laughs> of course, you didn't know you were supposed to start the engine. And uh, I think uh, that story, which I know has been circulating around for a while, I think it's a good picture of trying to live the life apart from the Spirit of God, trying to do things in our own strength rather than rely on the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit working in and, and through us. Well, uh, I want to just highlight a few things in Scripture um, that, that come through this life in the Holy Spirit. And I'm starting at verse 12. First of all, yeah, life in the Holy Spirit um, gives us direction. 
gives us 12, verse 12 and 13 here gives us direction. Therefore, brothers, we have an obligation, but it is not to the sinful nature to live according to it. For if we live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. And then he says, because those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. Those who are led by the Spirit. And um, again, those two key ideas. There's new life that comes through the Holy Spirit, but also being led by the Spirit of God. There's guidance through the Holy Spirit. The old sinful nature, the flesh, we're not to, to follow the leading of the flesh, the old sinful, na sinful nature, but there's this new reality uh, working in us, the Holy Spirit of God, who, who if we follow his promptings, uh, it leads to life, uh, an abundant life. I believe a key part of this is the daily choices that we make. You know, all of us, um, our whole day, in a sense, is, is a, a series of daily choices that we make. And it's important that we pray, um, Lord, um, help me to follow the leading of your Holy Spirit. Not just where the flesh, the sinful human nature wants to go, but know that we would follow the promptings and the leading of the Holy Spirit on a day-to-day on a -day basis. So that's the first thing I want to talk about, new life and direction through the Holy Spirit. The next thing that I see here in this passage is there's, there's a new identity, um, maybe especially verse 14 here, a new identity that we have. Um, uh, those, those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive the Spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, you received the spirit of sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. And um, what a wonderful thing that a life in the Spirit, we have a new identity as children of God. And I've spoken about this before. The fact is many of us, maybe all of us, come from a family that's somewhat dysfunctional. It, 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 we, this side of heaven, we, we don't really fully experience unconditional love. Um, but the good news is, as children of God, we're, we're members of a new family, uh, the family of God. Uh, what a wonderful thing that is. We have a new family. We have a loving Heavenly Father who loves us unconditionally. And we have, um, we, we live in that perfect relationship uh, with our loving Father. We call, Our hearts cry out, Abba, Father. That ought to do that. If we're children of God on a daily basis, we ought to be calling, calling out, Father, Heavenly Father, guide me, lead me. Thank you for this. Um, reveal yourself to me more, show me your ways. So we have a new identity. Um, you know, identity theft, you hear a lot about that these days, people online stealing somebody else's identity and using that for all kinds of terrible, <laughs> terrible things. But of course, Christians can, can have identity. We can allow the enemy to steal away our true identity that we have as children of God with a loving Heavenly Father. We need to be rooted and grounded in that truth as well. Well, the third thing that I see here in this passage is there's new hope and future glory. And that really takes us to verse, oh, maybe verse 18. Um, it's kind of throughout the passage, but especially um, 18. He says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Of course, <laughs> Paul, he suffered a lot intensely. Um, but it's a bedrock truth that the suffering that we go through now does not compare with the glory that is going to be revealed to us in the future. He said, continues, he says, The creation waits with in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, 
not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from the bondage of decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. And he goes on to talk about the whole of creation. The whole of creation has been sub subjected to this uh, frustration and, and waits for the, not only, we not only wait for our own redemption, but the redemption of all of creation. So this new hope that we have, it's, it's a sure and certain hope. It's not a hope that's like, oh, I hope it's going to be sunny out today, or I hope the battery on my phone that's recording this doesn't die in a few minutes. Um, no, it's a sure and certain hope that we have in the future. And we're told that we, the, all of creation groans inwardly, and we groan inwardly as, as well. The sense of realizing we haven't yet received all that is ours as children of God. I mean, I groan inwardly every morning when I get out of base, bed. Um, you know, actually, I groan outwardly as well. Um, that's just a, a reality. Scripture actually says that in verse 22, it's like birth pangs. Um, you know, sp the spiritual groaning life, like birth pangs in the expectation of this, this new life and this new future that is about to come forth. Um, so uh, this, is, this is very important. You know, you might say, you know, in, in our day-to-day -day life, we often say, is this all there is? <laughs> well, there is more. In and through the Spirit of God, uh, he wants to produce all kinds of good th gifts and joy and, and the life of Christ. But um, I just wanted to draw attention to the fact that we know there is far more to come. This future glory that is going to be revealed to us one day. And it may not, may not be too long away. I'd encourage you to, to look at the book of Revelation, maybe especially the last three chapters of that, and it will give you a sense of, of the glory that is ours in Christ that one day we'll be participating in. So I just encourage you, maybe, yeah, last 19, 20, 21 of Revelation has a real sense of, of, of this glory, this future glory that, we, that will be ours. Um, anyways, I don't want to go on too long here because I don't want to keep you too long, but I don't want my battery on my phone to die and then I'll be in, the, in the real trouble. But I'm going to, I'll close with prayer and then I wanted to close with um, the, the ironic blessing that I've, I've used a few times before. Again, the, the prayer that the people of Israel, Aaron was to bless the people of Israel with. But I'll start with my own prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you that as children of God, um, we have, we can know this life in the spirit. We're not just controlled to be controlled by this sinful nature, but Lord, that we would live according to the promptings and the power of your Holy Spirit in our, in our life. Lord, we thank you that he brings us new life. He brings us a new identity as, as children of God with a loving Heavenly Father. And we have a new hope as well that will keep us going in this present time of, of suffering um, and challenges and this time of inward growing. So we thank you for this gift of life in, in all its abundance through your Holy Spirit. Amen. And then uh, from Numbers chapter 6, I want to pronounce this blessing upon, upon you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance to you and give you peace. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. So as uh, chosen children of God, I pray that uh, today that you would walk in the Spirit, that you would follow the, the promptings of the Holy Spirit on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And I know that uh, as you do that, You'll experience uh, his life, his, his joy. There may be challenges, but you'll experience God's life, joy, and his power throughout the day. So God be with you. Thank you for tuning in. And um, we'll, uh, and feel free to, if you ever, if you, again, if you're going through a challenging time or, or whatever, you don't know what to do, feel free to give me a, a phone call. Uh, my phone number is on the information, the email that's sent out there. 
God bless you. Peace be with you.